Ian Huntley was born into a working class home in Grimsby, North East Lincolnshire, England. On January 31st, 1974. He is the first son of Kevin and Linda Huntley. An asthma sufferer, he had a turbulent time whilst he was at school, as he was often targeted for school bullying. The problem continued to escalate till he was 13 years old. He was forced to change schools. He left school in 1990. He declined to go back into studying, even though he had good grades. He went straight into employment. When he left school, he already had developed an interest in young female girls. And he was seen out with 13 year old girls, even though when he was 18. In December 1994, Ian Huntley met 18-year-old Claire Evans. The two debarked on a whirlwind romance and married each other within weeks. The marriage didn't last long, however, and the both split within days and Claire moved on, choosing to move in with Huntley's younger brother, Wayne, instead. Ian Huntley refused to grant divorce to his wife so she could go and marry his younger brother Wayne. He was furious at the situation and only decided in 1999 to actually allow his wife to marry his brother and grant her divorce. Following his divorce, Huntley continued to be erratic, moving from flat to flat from place to place. He had a series of relationships. One was with a 15 year old teenage girl of who he fathered a daughter with in 1998. A sexual inquiry was carried out on Ian Huntley from 1995 to 2001. He had sexual intercourse with 11 young girls ranging from 11 to 17 years of age. January 7th, 1998. Huntley appeared in court. He was charged with robbing a neighbour's house. And in May 1998, he was charged with the rape of an 18 year old girl in Grimsby. The case went to court and no proceedings or further action was taken due to lack of evidence, which led him to believing he got away with it. In February 1999, he met 22-year-old Maxine Carr at a nightclub and they decided to move in with each other just after four weeks. The relationship adjured even though there was quite a lot of arguments within it. And in 2001, they moved to the little town of Littleport, where Ian Huntley took a job as a team manager of a bunch of caretakers. In September 2001, he applied for the role of a caretaker at a local college. And in November, he was given the position after though he had a experience and court case and record around sexual assault with teenagers. He was given the post. Maxine Carr was also given a role as a teaching assistant at a local school. In the early evening of August 2002, two 10 year old girls, Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman, was going out to buy sweets when they walked past Ian Huntley's rented house near the college. Ian saw them and decided to go out to his doorstep and invite them in, claiming that Carr was in the property and knew the girls and wanted to talk to them, even though she was away at relatives. 
and the girls went into the house and within minutes Ian Huntley had murdered them. How do we know they were here at 6.15? Well we have an eyewitness. Ian Huntley here is a familiar figure. Evening in. You're the school caretaker. The girls Jessica and Holly would know you and they saw you on the front doorstep. What, what went on? The girl, I don't know the girls. Um, I was still on the front doorstep grooming my dog down. She'd run away and come back a bit of a mess. Um, they just came across and asked how Miss Carr was. As she used to teach them at St Andrews. Um, I just said she weren't very good as she hadn't got the job. And they just said, please tell her that we're very sorry. And uh, off the walk in the direction of the, um, the library over there. Ian Huntley would grant interviews with the local press about the situation, which led investigators to take serious action. The shirts was found at the premises of Ian Huntley, leading the police to arrest Ian Huntley and Maxim Carr on suspicion of murder. August 17, 2002, 13 days after the girls had disappeared. A game warden discovered the girls' bodies at RAF Lurkenheath in Suffolk, which was quite close to Ian Huntley's father's house. Autopsy done on the girls' bodies declared that their probable cause of death was electrolysation, but their bodies was too far decomposed to declare if they had suffered any sexual assault. Despite the attempt of Ian Huntley to destroy the forensic evidence, dysphestic hair residue and detonce of the girls' bodies declared that it was Ian Huntley who had murdered the girls. Huntley was arrested and charged with the murder of the girls and was formally charged and sectioned under the Mental Health Act and was holded at Rampton High Security Hospital. Maxine Carr was arrested as well for defending a offender, as well as conspiring to defend the cause of justice against Ian Huntley and lead him with a false alibi on the night of the disappearance of the girls. November the 5th, 2003, the investigation was widely opened and made light of everything on the mainstream news that Ian Huntley and Maxine Carr had murdered them girls. Ian Huntley was charged and prosecuted with two teenage girls as murders, while Maxine Carr was charged on because in the curse of justice and defending an offender and giving a false alibi. The prosecution, three weeks into the trial, declared the evidence that it was Ian Huntley that had murdered the girls. Ian Huntley declared that it wasn't him that had killed the murder, but changed his story in the case that he actually did know what was going on and what had happened. Declaring that the girls did die at his house, but both deaths was accidental. The defence declared Ian Huntley as their first witness. And he had declared that he was sorting out a nose bleed and actually knocked one of the girls into the bath and accidentally strangled one of the other girls whilst trying to shut her up from screaming. On cross-examination, the prosecution declared that his version of aspects of what happened was actually a total pack of lies. Three days later, Maxine's car's verdict was in court and declared she had no expectations or, or was aware of the murders. And declared if she knew what was going on and she knew that he had murdered the girls, she would have never, ever, 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 have protected him. After close examination, the prosecution declared that Ian Huntley and Maxine Carr were very, very good liars and actually they declared that Ian Huntley was killed the girls because he was sexually fantasised with them. Even though physical evidence of assault or sexual contact with the girls was impossible to actually prove. After a five day trial, the prosecution declared that Ian Huntley was telling lies and decided that it was a very good liar and decided to send him to prison. And on December 17th, the jury 
declared he was guilty of the murders of two innocent girls. Huntley was prosecuted to life in imprisonment, even though there was a delay due to the 2003 Criminal and Justice Act to declare his sentence. After the 2003 Criminal Justice Act came into force one day after his sentence. At a hearing on September 29th, 2005, declared that the Soham killings did not meet the criteria to give a full life sentence. That now was reserved for sexual, sadistic or abduction cases under the new act and imposed a 40 years sentence which offers Ian Huntley no real hope of release. On September 14th, 2005, Ian Huntley had been attacked by another inmate at Belmarsh Prison and was scalded with boiling hot water and he couldn't attend this prosecution or hearing. Max Sinclair was cleared of all charges of defending an offender but was found guilty of course of the course of justice and given three and a half years in prison and was released under priest protection in 2000 and May 2004 after serving 16 months in prison on remand. Car was given a brand new identity on her release and was ruled by the High Court that she would be protected under her new identity under the protection that if her identity was given she would be killed basically and there was an investigation carried out to discover that and the failings of Humberside Police by MP David Huntley and it led to the resign of the Chief of Humberside Police. On July the 5th 2004 Maxine's car's mother was arrested and prosecuted after turning around and asking a witness not to do prosecution which led to the prosecution of the witness not being able to actually stand because of a threatening. She was prosecuted for this offence. On September 5th 2006 Ian Huntley was found in his prison cell after suspect that he had taken a drug overdose he was sent to Pinderfields Hospital and was turned to HMP Wakefield Munster Mansion the next day. The Prime Prosecution released a statement that Ian Huntley still remains in prison under police custody and self-harm and prospect of him taking his own life. He will be successed in the prison and looked after by his rules under the Mental Health and Wellbeing Act. In June 2003, Ian Huntley was declared a suicide risk after hiding antidepressant tablets within a teabag box. Four years later, in 1997, he declared to the police he was involved in a sexual assault with an 11-year-old girl. A year after that, in 2008, he was sentenced to go to HMP Franklin. Due as in his incarceration, he had been reported to being attacked by four inmates. And in 2011, it was reported to have having his throat slashed by David Fox. In 2018, Ian Huntley apologised while he was behind bars on a tape for the court problems he caused when killing the girls and this was laid to the Sun newspaper. I am so terribly, terribly sorry for what I have done. The people of Soham took me into their community, they trusted me, they gave me a job and a home and I betrayed that trust in the worst possible way. Sorry for the pain that I've caused to the families of friends of Holly and Jessica, for the pain that I've caused my family and friends. I wish you all the very best. I hope she's happy in what she's doing. I just hope she's found uh, happiness, basically. Ian Huntley, in his days in prison, now paints and plays chess. He declares that the worst part of being in prison is he can't walk his dog, he can't drive to relieve stress. All he could do is sit behind bars, play chess and, and paint. 
He even is allowed to order fish and chips from outside due to him declaring that the pigeon food is so bad. Ian Huntler on the tape confesses to murdering the two girls. Even though Holly and Jessica's family had to go through a full tribunal and court case in 2003 because he wouldn't declare being guilty of the killings. Ian Huntley was given the COVID-19 vaccination during his time as stay at HMP Franklin within Durham, where he serves his sentence today.